Hello Zola and hello everybody else and Hello everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. you. Yes indeed. Uh, I thought it would be interesting to spend a, a few minutes talking about what it is we've been doing and the relationship of one martial arts to another. Well in fact let me do interject this that this series will be called Tai Chi to Kapoor. Oh, Tai Chi to Kapoor. Uh -huh. The series is just this particular class. This series, right? Okay. The series, okay. yes. Uh -huh. Well, as you can see, we have on our Kapoor uh, t shirts. Yes. And I can explain how that came about first. Please. Before we get into uh, a, a little demonstration of the similarities of movements in Kapoor. Uh, and Tai Chi. In 1992, uh, I went to Ghana and I lived in a little area in Accra called Osu. And while I was there, I started a capoeira class. I had, oh, very good. There you go. Osu Capoeira, Ghana. Yeah. Uh, I didn't introduce myself, did I? Oh, oh. my name is Odie Hawkins. And I'm Zola Selena Hawkins. Hawkins. Okay. We're just so way ahead of ourselves. Yes. Anyway, I, I was uh, in Ghana in this, this uh, neighborhood called Osu. And while I was there, of course, you know, if you know something about a martial art, you have to practice. So <clears throat> I was looking for a place to practice. I found a place to practice, which was in a, uh, a, a, a vacant lot next to a, a bar, a beer bar, called the Chalazon. Some people saw me, some of the young people in, in the area, and said, you know, what's that? And, uh, Fast Eddie, Pani, uh, Azigi, Antoinette, Squeegee, all you guys, whichever one of you all, to listen, I know the word will spread very fast. Uh, I started the class, and we wound up eventually with something like 25 people. It fluctuated because these were working people. They didn't have time to do exercises and stuff. Plus, plus your Germans. Well, that came a little bit later. Okay. Once I started the class in the neighborhood, uh, I was directed to go to something called a fitness center, which was owned by a brother from Philadelphia, I believe, named Tyrone. And the fitness center had all of the kind of things you have in the fitness center, you know, the barbells and this and that. Mm -hmm. But he had a big, nice room, and I was invited to come in and teach capoeira. Uh, I want to give you the short version of it because it would be a long thing. It would take you a long time to get into all the nuances of capoeira. But basically, there are two styles. There's an old style of capoeira called capoeira angola, and a more modern style that dates from something like 1937 uh, called Capoeira Hegenau. The martial art itself was born in Africa but developed in Brazil. The reason why is because when the Brazilian uh, slave traders took enslaved people, took captured people from Angola to uh, Brazil, to work in the sugar plantations, mm -hmm. they immediately ran away. Uh, they were escapees from slavery, and they established something called quilombos, which were like free zones. And if you could make it to a free zone, mm -hmm. one of the most famous quilombo was called Palmares, and uh, it uh, it was the home of about 50,000 escaped Africans from slavery. Uh, it lasted for about a hundred years before it was crushed by the combined efforts of the Dutch, the Danish, the Portuguese, and English. So some people ganged up on it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, to bring it uh, fast forward to America, not South America, but this America, uh, uh, Capoeira started uh, becoming popular, I think, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. I, I started my study of Capoeira in like 1985, and uh, my teacher was a man named uh, Enrique Donacimento, who was not a mastery, but 
they call someone who knows a lot about it a professor. The mastery, mastery is somebody who is uh, someone who knows a very great deal about it, both styles, Capoeira, Asian, and Angola. Uh, dating from that time, from like 1985 to today, I've been doing some Capoeira. I had to retire as much as I hated to because uh, I began to have hip problems and I had my left hip replaced, my, uh, the ball inside of the, the thing. That, what do you call it? Yeah, uh, femur. The femur. This, this, oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah. what it means is that there were many, many movements that I used to do and as uh, Lightning Hopkins used to say, I can't do no more. <laughs> but I can give you some general idea of uh, what the basic movements might be. Now, when I started studying uh, Tai Chi with Master Tom, with uh, Zola, who was there first by several months, four or five months, I think, 18 years ago, 19 years ago, going on 20 years ago. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. Long time. Uh, I immediately recognized some of the similarities uh, of movement despite the fact that uh, each martial art comes from a particular kind of culture and it has nuances, or I should say something like a, a DNA of the cultural group that develops the art. For example, Tai Chi is more inner. I think this is my own opinion. Meditative. Meditative. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it's much slower, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it fast. Capoeira, Heijia now, is modern and fast and very gymnastic and very fluid. And I think it has a lot more effervescence to it. It has a lot of... Uh, it has a lot of uh, fun, mm -hmm. you know. I, in 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 my in my experience with uh, Tai Chi, just far with uh, Master Tom, with uh, Zola, with uh, Doctor Daniel Hoover, Doctor Johnson Lin, and I, I haven't seen any evidence of the same kind of ebullience that you find in Capoeira. Uh, capoeira tends to be a group activity. People surround the two people playing in what is called a harder, and the people practice, in a sense, physical shadow boxing. I do this, and she does that, and she does this, and I do that. So it's a language, and there's names for the specific movements. Just there, just there are languages uh, that describe the movements of of uh, Tai Chi. White crane spreads its wing, mm -hmm. uh, patting wild horse the mane, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to identify the movements, and in a sense, in the same way that uh, Linnaeus came up with the Latin names for uh, medical terms, mm -hmm. so that everybody anywhere would know if you say femur or if you say solar plexus or right. sternum, right. you wouldn't have to. Uh, blunder around in your own language, whether it be French, Spanish, German, whatever. You could just simply refer to the Latin, which became a universal medical language. Let's put my chairs back a little bit so we're back in the pool in the sun a little bit. Okay. So I'm talking uh, and giving you just a, a brief background of myself and it, what it is that uh, we would like to do. Okay. And one of the things I want to point out that uh, as Odie mentioned, Hejanao as opposed to Angola, this series will be basically for older people, okay? We're not going to be doing a lot of running around and jumping around, but things that an older person can do or a child can do. And, you know, we try to give you directions so that you'll do it safely. And it'll be very basic, be very simple. So if you want to join us with this series of Tai Chi to Cabrera, uh, I hope you will find it informative and 
that will help you in ways you want to be helped. Well put. I, I'll, I'll leave it go at that. I don't think I'll add any more to what she just said. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to have us do right now is to do the first basic movement in Capoeira, both keep in mind Capoeira, Angola, Capoeira, Haitian Isle. One is the old form, let's say, and the, the uh, Haitian Isle is the newer form, much more gymnastic. And it has to do with the fact that uh, in the modern era, more people doing gymnastic things uh, have entered uh, the, the martial art. Also, it, also, the thing is that they don't seem to know the history. And so a lot of people now doing capoeira, they'll hit you. Okay, so, you know, when I learned about 20 years ago, it was no, 17, years, well, 17 years ago, it was, you don't want to hurt your partner. You don't want to hurt the person you're playing with because then who you have, who will you have to play with? Okay, notice she says playing. Uh, to my knowledge, I've never heard of anybody talking about playing Taekwondo or playing Tai Chi, for example. No. Uh, in this sense, maybe the, uh, the African foundation of, of Capoeira, Haitian Isle, and Angola stem from a, a dance tradition. And uh, so far as I know, Tai Chi doesn't come from a uh, Chinese dance tradition. Mm -hmm. It developed in another kind of way. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not offering any definitive uh, instructions or trying to express attitudes to say one is better than the other, but that they had separate developments and we happen to know a little bit about both of them. So I'd like for us, first of all, to, to start off with the basic movement in Tai Chi, I'm sorry, the basic movement in Capoeira. Mm -hmm. the, the basic movement is the same for Angola and for Haitian Isle. I should say, I'll probably say Capoeira to Tai Chi because you were a Capoeirista. I am a Capoeirista. You are a Capoeirista before you were a Tai Chi. So let's change it around to Capoeira to Tai Chi. Okay, I'll, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to fight that. Okay. Uh, once a caparista, always a caparista. I think you should say, I've added on, as far as I'm concerned, I've added on another layer, and that layer is Tai Chi, and I'm pleased and happy to be able to do so, because while I was unable to continue a, a capoeira career, I have been able to continue a Tai Chi career because it accommodates people with injuries. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's in some way, I think some way, much better for your physical health than a strenuous martial art. Right, but capoeira does give you the cardio, and you have people in their 90s playing capoeira angola, okay, as opposed to Haitian. They're, they're playing it, and uh, mm -hmm. some of them ought to stop. <laughs> you know, let's not, let's not, you know, you can only do some things so long, and when you see somebody 90 years old, Trying to do you know, who, who gets up from his arthritic written chair and make a few moves. I applaud the possibility of him being able to do that. But let's be honest, to really do it, you can't be old and stiff. Okay. Having said all that, all right. we'll start off with the basic movement for Capoeira, Angola, and it's the same movement for Capoeira, Haitian Isle. The movement is called the Jinga. We're going to move these chairs to one side. In, uh, in Capoeira Regional and Angola, only two people play at one time. You may be surrounded by people in a circle, but only two will play at once. At, at once. And then perhaps someone is taken out and then replaced by someone else. The area that you play in in a circle is called a harder, and the harder, in a sense, represents the world. So the two people in this world try not to hurt each other, as she said earlier, because then you wouldn't have anybody to play with. <laughs> so 
it both breeds competition, but also breeds cohesiveness. And uh, what I'm going to do is start off the Jinga, and Zola is going to join me, and you'll see that we're doing something that looks like a dance. So, we're doing it very slowly. Why don't you move along to your left? This way. That's the other. Okay. Now, if you were doing Tai Chi, you would be doing wave arms. Wave hands. So wave hands, so that you block it with your lower hand and also with your upper hand. You see, if we are doing it very well, we should stay in step, but not necessarily. We can change. We can call it crossing the rhythm to try to confuse her for a minute. <laughs> I did it. I did it. I did it. Okay. And we should show it from the, if you do it from the back, uh, facing you do. the door. Okay. We're doing it. Okay, if you see her feet are shoulder length apart, you know you really shouldn't cross your feet like that. That puts you in a bad situation, bad position. So And you shouldn't be too wide. And you shouldn't be too wide. If you are you take you measure the step that is comfortable for you. Some people, someone who's doing this yeah. is too much. So bring it in. We're doing a step called the Jinga. You can move it around. It's a good cardio exercise. If you did nothing but the jinga for about, I don't know, five minutes at a, at a quick pace, you would find yourself. <laughs> and fine. And again, uh, a lot to do it slowly. Like if you were just going to tell me how to do, I would I'd put out my left foot and I'd have my hands on my left side. If your foot is forward, your hand should be on that side. And then I put this <laughs> step forward and it swings. If your foot is forward, your hand should be on that side. If your foot is forward, just remember that. Okay. And so always, or you can change your hands so that when you, when you first taught me, I was both hands were on this side. And then you later helped me so that one hand blocked. One is low and one is high, but if you put it far, they're both on the same side. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's just the Jenga. And so we're just going to do little by little. So if you have any questions, make some comments on this YouTube below and we'll try to answer them for you. But again, that's just the Jenga. And then we're going to do Tai Chi walking, walking meditation. And I did want to go through what's the horse dance. The horse, and the horse dance. dance is done in many martial arts. Mission. Taekwondo. If you can imagine that you are on a horse mm -hmm. and Taekwondo it would be a punching stance, but also in Tai Chi, your knees are bent slightly. You don't have to go down this far if you can't do that. Right. If you can, fine, but you don't need to. Right. And you should, your weight should be evenly distributed so that you're able to go right or left with no, no real effort. Mm -hmm. right. And I know it's like in some of the uh, horse dances, you talk about the keyboard. Your toes point in. Yeah. Point in. The same way it would be if you were on a horse. Mm -hmm. okay. Horse dance. Horse dance. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So you guys got that? Horse dance. Sitting down. If you're sitting on something. Your horse. The horse. Sitting down on the horse. All right. So the horse dance, and I guess I'll do the cat stance. The cat stance. Which is basically, it's. If you ever saw a cat. Tiptoe across a chessboard. By the way, one came by this morning. Where? 
He walked across this way. Was it the black and white? Yes, it was the black and white. I know him. Okay. <laughs> Did you say something to him? I told him, I said, you better leave because Odie will find you. He will deal I with you. I have him. reasons, sanitary reasons, for not wanting to see him here. Mm -hmm. But I do like the way they do their stands. Yeah. <laughs> and the cat stands, you'd say almost 75% of your weight? About 75 uh, yeah. Okay, is on your balancing leg and very little weight is on the front leg so that you can kick or move it very quickly. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So it's just very balanced, the cat stays. On the ball of your foot, don't press down. Mm -hmm. And the supporting leg, as she says, will have for most of the weight. Right. So, horse dance, cat dance, Jenga. Jenga. And Tai Chi walking. Tai Chi walking. Let's do Tai Chi walking. Okay. You going to the camera? Yeah. And away from the camera and to the camera. So, to the camera, starting with our left foot. Usually, for some reason, we do the left foot. I don't know. When most well, times. people are right hand. Which is, yeah, very odd. So, here we go. Starting out with your left. Heel to toe. Sit back, turn, and going to pause. Step out one, adjust the back leg. Shift back, turn your foot, come up. Step out, adjust the back leg. Shift back, turn your foot. Now this time we're going to step out, shift back. Turn, step out, shift back, and turn. Let's go that way. Okay. And here we go. Starting again with the left. You put your hands on your, your waist, if you like, or behind your back. And one, shift back, two, turn foot, three. Step out, one. Shift back, turn the foot, step out, adjust the back leg, shift back, turn the foot, step out, shift the back leg, turn the foot, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now for those who can't find it difficult to adjust the back leg, I suggest that so it's more of an advanced move. I suggest that so that both your knees will be going in the same direction. And you don't want to hurt yourself while you're doing any exercise. I suggest that you drink water. Yes. Get your water. There. Mine is here. Okay. So again, drink water during the day. more so than juice. Exercise at least 30 minutes a day. This is a short video and our Capoeira to Tai Chi series will be short. We will be showing you only a few things each time. So in this lesson one, I hope that it's been beneficial. The jinga. And do the jinga. <laughs> oh no, you're not. <laughs> Capoeira is full of malicia. Uh, this is friendly malicia. Friendly malicia. You look up the word. And I will be suggesting a few books for you to look at in Tai Chi. And Teacher Odi will be suggesting a few movements in Angola. They have names. Sometimes a little complicated there to the uh, American. English speaking persons, but. Not difficult. Uh, no. And who knows, we might even show you an instrument, or a couple of instruments, yeah. that one plays when doing copyright. For now, see you next time. See you next time. Jenga. Jenga. Do-do-do. Do-do-do. Do-do-do.